What happens when two of Samsung's best 10-inch tablets go head-to-head? -head? I'm Taylor Martin, this is Pocket Now, and this is the Samsung Galaxy Note 10.1 2014 edition versus the Nexus 10. Of all the Android tablet manufacturers, Samsung is unsurprisingly one of the most prominent. Its Galaxy Tab and Galaxy Note brands bring plenty of value adds to what would otherwise be pretty standard tablets. And Samsung is also the creator of what many consider to be the best Android tablet in the past 11 months, the Nexus 10. Last month, Samsung announced its latest addition to its broad palette of tablets, the Galaxy Note 10.1 2014 edition. How does it compare with Samsung's purest Google tablet from 2012? That's what we're here to find out. Although these tablets both come from the same company, they are distinctly different, particularly in design, build quality, and specs. The biggest similarity, externally, is the power button and volume rocker placement, which are both located on the upper left edge of the tablets. Other than that, they can be more likened to distant relatives than siblings or close cousins. The Nexus 10, which feels incredibly premium, is composed almost entirely of a soft-touch plastic around its back and sides, and that offers a very nice grip on the device. Its speakers run along the edges, facing forward. And it's not exactly light on the bezel, but on the flip side it offers on-screen buttons as opposed to the Note 10.1's obscure capacitive and physical button layout. The Note 10.1 is packed into a much lighter compact chassis, it's 63 grams lighter, 20.8 mm narrower, 6.2 mm shorter, and 1 mm thinner than the Nexus 10. Like the Galaxy Note 3, its backside comes in either black or white, with a faux leather texture. The black is markedly more grippy and leather-like though the white still feels notably more premium than the hyperglaze coating on other Galaxy tablets of past. And the faux metal trim along the edges is still present, though it's now lined to resemble the pages of a notebook. Even internally, the 2014 Note 10.1 and the Nexus 10 have a swath of dissimilarities. The Nexus 10, nearing one year old, features a 1.7 GHz dual-core Exynos 5250 chip to the Note 10.1's Exynos Octa, a combination of a 1.9 GHz quad-core processor and a 1.3 GHz quad-core processor which work together. The Note 10.1 also features one more gigabyte of RAM, a higher resolution image sensor, and more storage options, including a microSD card slot. The Nexus 10, however, does offer a larger capacity battery, 9000 mAh to the Note 10.1's 8220 mAh, and it also has NFC while the Note 10.1 2014 edition does not. Both the Note 10.1 and Nexus 10 have super crisp WQXGA displays. That's 2560 by 1600 pixels at 10.1 inches, making an impressive 299 pixels per inch. But it only takes one glance at both displays to see which one is the better panel. The Nexus 10 uses a super PLS TFT display. The new Note 10.1 uses a super clear LCD panel, and the differences are rather obvious. Both panels are incredibly sharp, bright, and offer very wide viewing angles. However, the super clear LCD panel on the Note 10.1 has much more vibrant colors, better contrast, and deeper blacks. Finally, the digitizer. The Nexus 10 only accepts capacitive input. But the Note 10.1, as you would expect, comes with a Wacom digitizer for incredibly accurate S Pen input, something which couldn't be more fitting on a device this size. As much as we love the feeling of the Nexus 10 in the hands, we have to give the hardware edge to the Note 10.1. It packs significantly better specifications in a smaller, lighter package. The software side of things is where these two tablets take two significantly different routes. The Nexus 10 comes with the latest version of Android aboard, in its absolute purest form. It ships with bone stock Android 4.3 and all the tablet optimizations available, such as the separated notification and quick toggle shades. It also has support for multiple user profiles as well as restricted access. The Note 10.1 may also come with Android 4.3, but it's buried beneath Samsung's own bloated software, TouchWiz. We have a love-hate relationship with TouchWiz. It brings tons of value proposition, especially to the Note brand, but it also comes with a ton of bloatware which often hinders performance. The S Pen, for starters, comes with its own suite of software. Air Command is launched when you remove the S Pen from its integrated slot, found on the upper right corner of the device. Or you can hold the button on the S Pen and hover it just over the display. Air Command has five quick launch options, Action Memo, Scrapbooker, ScreenWrite, S Finder, and Pen Window. Each of these features are unique to the Note series and are truly useful features for any larger device. TouchWiz also comes with the infinitely handy multi-window feature, which allows two applications to run side by side. You can drag and drop text between two open applications, resize them, swap them around, and you can even open a pin window atop the two running applications, making the Note 10.1 one of the most performance and productivity focused Android tablets to date. Many different TouchWiz features appear on the Note 10.1 as well. 
smart screen features such as smart stay and smart pause, chat on Samsung apps, Samsung Hub, S Translator, S Voice, Watch On, etc. And there is some preloaded bloatware worth mentioning as well. Sketchbook for Galaxy, Polaris, Office 5, Evernote, Flipboard, and Twitter, which is the official Twitter client with actual tablet support, exclusive to this specific Samsung tablet. However, we cannot begin to wrap our heads around one single fact about the Note 10.1. Considering Samsung has gone the extra mile to make sure users get the full effect of the 10-inch display, it's unacceptable that Samsung still has not optimized the notification shape for tablets. It's full screen, meaning the notifications unnecessarily take up the entire width of the display. Not to mention, the settings application on the Note 10.1 is even more confusing, since it's both tabbed and paned. Four tabs separate various types of settings, connections, device, controls, and general. And beneath each classification is a two-pane view. For ease of use and looks, the Nexus 10 takes the cake in software. But thanks to the tablet-optimized features such as multi-window and air command, the Note 10.1 actually has the upper hand. Keep in mind, that upper hand says little about performance, an area one would imagine a device with two quad-core processors would excel. The Note 10.1, however, has trouble keeping up with the intense multitasking, such as multi-window, constantly stuttering and dropping frame rates. It seems the over-encumbered touch with software is more than enough to counteract the performance-improving effects of Project Butter. Although powered by a less powerful chipset, the Nexus 10 seems to perform noticeably more smoothly in day-to-day -day operation. That said, it's not capable of quite as extensive multitasking as the Note 10.1, so it's a trade-off of sorts. The Note 10.1 does seem to catch up after a few minutes of dealing with stutters and jitters, but honestly, that sort of thing is unacceptable on a device this powerful. If you're the type who cares about benchmarks, their respective scores should be a stern testament to how poorly optimized TouchWiz is for performance. However, thanks to the Exynos Octa, the Note 10.1 is noticeably better for gaming. For a device geared towards media consumption, the speaker performance can't be understated. Thankfully, both tablets have loud and crisp speakers. The Nexus 10 speaker setup, however, is notably better. The speakers are less tinny and they're also forward-facing, and effectively impossible to accidentally cover up. The Note 10.1 speakers, on the other hand, are along the outer edges and can certainly be muffled by accident. Battery performance is also a place the Nexus 10 seems to soar. The Nexus 10 employs a 33.75 watt hour battery, which tends to perform exceptionally well on standby, only dropping a couple of percent per day. In use, the battery drains at a fairly respectable rate, considering the size and resolution of the display. It will only need to be charged every few days, depending on usage. The Note 10.1 is not quite as favorable in standby, dropping upwards of 10% over a span of 24 hours but its 31 watt hour battery will offer similar battery performance while in use. Though since you're capable of doing far more with a tablet at once, you may very well be able to eat through your entire charge more quickly. Stay tuned for a more in-depth look at the Note 10.1's battery performance in the full review. Finally, camera performance. If you're so inclined to take pictures with a 10 inch device, look no further than the Note 10.1. Its eight megapixel camera isn't the greatest around. Seriously, your two year old smartphone can probably take better pictures, but of these two, there's really no comparison. In favorable lighting conditions, both will take fairly balanced photos, but the Note 10.1's images are more true to life, more detailed, and more vibrant. It offers more dynamic range in the auto shooting mode, and it was quicker to focus and capture. We had trouble with the Nexus 10 capturing blurry pictures more than once. In all, there are only a few areas the Nexus 10 has an edge in this comparison. The Note 10.1 software is bloated, causing several performance issues. Price is another. The 16GB Nexus 10 starts at $399 whereas the same capacity Note 10.1 starts at 549. Of these two, which tablet would you choose? If this were the Snapdragon variant of the Note 10.1, it would be a no-brainer. But since this is the Exynos-powered Galaxy Note, it's up for debate. At the end of the day, as much as we're drawn towards the cheaper price point, purely stock Android experience, and the more reliable performance of the Nexus 10, the S Pen and the multitasking features of the Note 10.1 make up for the intermittent lag and stutters. When the Note 10.1 is running like it should, there's nothing else out there quite like it. We just wish Samsung would give the Wi-Fi Note 10.1 some Snapdragon love too. That's all for now. If you enjoyed the video, let us know by clicking the thumbs up button below and subscribing to the channel to see more videos like this one, as well as more Galaxy Note 10.1 coverage over the next week. Find us on Twitter, Facebook, and Google Plus at PocketNow. You can find me on Twitter at Casper Tech. I'm Taylor Martin, and I will see you next time.